Hey everybody, welcome to another RCT2 review. Uh, today we are lucky enough to be joined by Otter, who uh, has just recently uh, released his Marblehead Park, uh, which is a gold award winner on New Element. So uh, welcome in. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. Glad glad to be taking part. Absolutely. So you've got a uh, pretty nice uh, no custom scenery uh, realistic park here, kind of based on Cedar Point, I take it, based on Lake Erie. Um, and kind of has all those sort of realistic Cedar Fair type details. Is that more or less right? Uh, yeah, it's pretty spot on. I think using the, I mean, the logo and park layout, it's pretty much a reimagined Cedar Point, so to speak. Yeah, and I think it, it sits in there nicely at a good scale. I think Cedar Point can sometimes be overwhelming in the way that people try and tackle that into an RCT sense. And I think this kind of packages that up nicely and brings out some of those key features to a uh, much more easy to browse um, size. I just forgot the water park. That's true. Is that coming later? Maybe? No, no. <laughs> I think NCSO water parks are have got to be incredibly hard. I don't think I've ever seen one tried well. Uh, uh, be an undertaking. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's take a look at the park. So, actually, even before we get into the park, you get nice, nice parking lot, nice uh, landscaping all throughout kind of the space, and then uh, kind of a nice understated entrance here. But um, I always like this uh, darker brick combination with the gray roof. I think that looks good. But um, before the kind of themes, you have some themes that are stronger than others as far as just recognizable themes like this kind of winter area. Did you have any kind of conception for what this entry area was meant to be? Um, the kind of the thought was looking at some old um, Cedar Point uh, pictures and then looking at actually um, Silver Dollar City type stuff where it's just a lot of like little gift shops and kind of like an like a web of, of path, so to speak. Um, and then going back into the more like the kind of the big loop format of Cedar Point as you got deeper into the park, but the, oh, yeah. the entrance was really just meant to be kind of a gaggle of buildings. And it's kind of nice. There, there's not really one true, like, this is the way into the park sort of pathway. Like, you've kind of got this one off to the side, and this one goes over here towards the side of this building, but then there's also this other guy that cuts around the other side. So it's kind of a nice... Um, it's a little non-standard, I guess, or an asymmetrical, which I think is cool. I like this uh, little lake you've got here, just as some kind of nice scenic as you come up onto it. And it helps kind of split your area, because as you come through here, we kind of roll into our um, snowy-themed area, um, which actually I think this is pretty interesting in the fact that we really don't see this kind of a theme done in realistic parks. What made you want to go for this sort of winter thing? I think when I started building this park, it was about a year ago, so Christmas was coming up, um, so that, that was an in inspiration. But then uh, a weird one was, like, Defunct Land videos about old, like, Santa Claus and Christmas parks. Uh, so I nice. kind of went down that rabbit hole of researching that kind of stuff. Uh, oh. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this real quick, because you can come in from a couple different areas. Um, I guess kind of start on this side here. I love the uh, Schwarzkopf uh, Baron Curve here. That's a pretty nicely put together one, and you've got the uh, a little bit of theming here. It actually is cool that you were able to use the backdrop here of the larger building over on this side for your dark ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zarathustra uh, helped with that that hacking. I'm so I thank you to him. Yeah, he is one of the one of the hacking masters for sure. Um, I love this glass that uh, you're doing here with the arch and the stacked. Um, abstract station pieces uh, that's pretty nice to fill that in it actually fills in pretty cleanly yeah it did it was, it was um actually originally the park entrance was supposed to look like that but it was too uh too closed of a building for a park entrance i thought so i moved it back to there i see i like this one here kind of reminds me of the old cedar point casino <laughs> yeah that uh i think people noticed in the past that's uh I think you see a lot with NCSO type stuff, but reusing other buildings you've seen from other, other park makers and stuff. So that I, I'd say it's pretty similar to the one in Storybrooke, uh, Glen. 
Well, and I, I do like the use of the little huts here on the side, just as dormer windows across the whole thing. That's a pretty cool, uh, cool feature there. Well, let's uh, let's jump over here first coaster. So we've got our uh, arrow uh, suspended coaster here, Reindeer Run. Um, certainly getting the Iron Dragon vibe with the uh, final uh, turns over the water and the opposing lift hills and everything. Um, is that really where you get the primary inspiration for it? Hundred percent. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> Pretty easy to guess. A little more dynamic, at least, than the real one, so that's nice. Um, got that pretty cool climb and, and drop here, and then sort of the meandering through. Nice custom supports, too. Those worked out pretty well. Yeah, it took forever. Yeah, I can imagine so. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of copy and paste, I'm guessing. Uh, but yeah, that, that one turned out well. You get another nice uh, packed uh, swinging ship down here, and then you know, as we continue, we uh, kind of pop out of this area across the, the waterfall, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and then we have your Cedar Fair or Cedar Point esque beach with uh, the nice building here on the far end. Um, like the brick with the glass and the card wall. I think I saw that first with Alex, but I, I, I like seeing that. It's nice. Yeah, it's a good way to do posters or signage. And then you've got a uh, disco that's sort of kind of off on its own over here, I guess. Um, this is, I would kind of assume, is seems like a newer edition, 2017. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That sits sits there well. Um, the game stalls, I was super impressed by. So I really love this basketball game here. Um, did this one just come to you straight away, or was this a lot of iteration to get to this point? It took a couple tries, um, asking around a little bit from, from people on the Discord, kind of different vehicles I could use for it, but it ends up being, you could probably tell, 10 different rides to make that. So it took a little while, but it, it ended up only taking about an hour to come up with. Yeah, and for those who don't see it, you've got bumper boats here, and then you've got, is this the inverted coaster or the flying coaster here? Inverted. I think. It's like, it looks like the invert there. That's That's super clever. Um, and then also spinning around here, we've got our nice little cutaway for the scenery here. Um, I, I do like in a lot of these instances having the actual physical cutaway rather than having to use cutaway because I feel like it becomes sort of awkward and unwieldy sometimes to do that. So it's nice that you've you know, allowed for this here. So as we continue along, let's actually backtrack a little bit, get back up to the front here. We've got... Um, kind of a Cedar Fair staple up here with the uh, Turnpike cars. Uh, early Arrow uh, one, Arrow 1962. Is your thoughts on this park that it kind of follows the same Cedar Fair idea or Cedar Point idea in that it's like late 1800s type park that's just kind of developed over the years? Yeah, I think as I started getting more into the, the park, I kind of was upset at the fact that I never had like an actual railway or a rail line mm -hmm. to kind of to sell that better um but i i guess growing up on the history of parks like cedar point or euclid beach park um it, here in cleveland um i guess rail, rail railway parks are always kind of something that have interest me oh for sure and, and and i can imagine it would be a little challenging to bring that in here late in the game once you kind of get through it so i can kind of understand why you didn't um let's pick up this guy over here so this is lakeshore street we got cci from 96 um kind of has that filling in of the blue streak i guess with uh kind of similar looking station got the little cupola here on top of the um lift hill but uh has the all the cci trappings that you'd expect so pretty straightforward but a pretty pretty nice looking ride yeah that was um actually i was i was watching your uh wooden roller coaster academy video and this is kind of what what came from it no, well, that's, I, was, yeah, that's good. I, was, I was building this alongside you doing that video. Nice. Well, I'm glad it was helpful. Um, love, I love the way that it turned out. Kind of sits, sits pretty nicely. I like the uh, lopsided figure eight where you've got your straight section and then the one turnaround happens to one side and the other turnaround happens to the other side. I just think that's a nice kind of setting for that. And your uh, little details here, like the engine house under here with the vertical sign as the door. I know that's commonplace now in... in and CSO builds, but it, it looks nice. Yeah, yeah, I agree. 
All right, so let's roll up onto this side here, and uh, we get to uh, what feels like a little bit of a western type um, set of facades here. Does this area have a particular name theme, or is it more generic? Uh, probably pretty generic. I'd, I'd, there's a lot of western stuff on this half of the park, so I think it kind of all lumps together. Well, here you get Seneca Canyon here, your Intamin uh, Rapids ride. Uh, nice use of the, the monorail here stacked up and then the Rapids pieces. Um, seems to do a fair amount of stuff, which is cool, uh, and still not take up a ton of space. I, I feel like Rapids rides either end up in RCD being way too short or way too long. And I think this one kind of hits that balance where it's still doing interesting stuff, despite the fact that it's more or less just an oval. But you've got all the little spinning bumpers there. You've got the uh, kind of cool bridging here with the Gravity Group coaster. Uh, so that's that's a pretty cool uh, setup there. Um, but it seems to sit in the space well. And then as we continue kind of around back, we've got our uh, inverted coaster here. Actually pretty early on inverted coaster, 1993. So that's year two for the B&M invert. So that's... Um, you need it. It kind of reminded me of the Paramount Parks um, Top Gun models, which maybe want to ask uh, when I talk to you whether this was uh, a Paramount Park to start, or if it just so happens that that's a coincidence. Um, it honestly, I was just looking at like kind of going. I maybe should have done it where I add all the years to everything, but um, I did look at Top Gun for this because I figured it'd be like a a natural progression in terms of rides added to the park, but I didn't, I didn't honestly think Paramount. Well, that makes sense. And it's, it's sufficiently different enough that I think you, you're not going to immediately draw that unless you're, you're really, you know, looking for that, that kind of thing. I do love this, uh, this entry piece here with the, um, with the ride train. I think that's pretty cool. And then using the, uh, the hangers for both the kind of entry, entry and exit queue, uh, or entry queue and exit path. And then the station, uh, station itself here. Um, nice little layout too, kind of has that, um, early Top Gun vibe with, uh, maybe a little bit more to it beyond that. Yeah, it was a fun one to make. And then the uh, mini helicopters ride, which is something you don't see terribly often, uh, which is kind of nice to have that bit of difference there, and just a nice, uh, nice kind of detailing um, with some gardens and things. I feel like you often see this just in kids' areas, so it's kind of neat to see this off on its own, set with some gardens and everything, sort of offsetting the coaster. As in, you might have the kids riding this while the the teens go ride the coaster. It's a nice balance. Yeah, try and I mean, I feel like it's pretty common to do a supporting ride with a major coaster, so I figured something different. You don't really see, yeah, pedal copters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very, very different kind of vibe to it. Um, so as we continue across to this side, we get to our, uh, our medieval castle type area here. Kids coaster here with um, the Tivoli uh, model. So nice little kind of custom I always find kids coasters in RCT are kind of a pain because they either end up way too big or an oval and I feel like at least this one kind of hits that medium sized spot that works but you know you still get the helix in there and a couple hills and everything else so it still feels about right yeah I wish that you could do tighter turns on a junior coaster that would that'd be one thing I'd like to see for sure, yeah, at least to be able to get uh, just some tighter transitions in there or even some, some tighter hills and things like that. Um, but this sort of opens up to just this little plaza here. Not a whole lot going on as far as size-wise, but it actually sits really well in the space. So I love the circular fountain. Um, this building on the diagonal is cool, uh, the way that it just kind of sits in there. Um, and then the... Uh, other side here, we've got the log flume vehicles and everything um, using your uh, stained glass pieces on the inside, which is a pretty cool look for the whole thing. Um, I like the differences in textures on this building. So it's like a big station, but say four different kinds of buildings here with this awning and uh, queue arch and everything else. And there, it looks nice. Nothing is totally dominating as far as size wise goes. 
And the well, thank you. The uh, the style of that area actually was just kind of riffing off of what I did with my last park, um, the last full park I did the year prior. Um, yeah, you're cranking it out there. I feel like yeah. that's come on, that's fast now. How many is that? Because you you had done one before that one even too, right? Yep. Yeah, it's three in the past two years. Yeah. Well, it's uh, something to be said for productivity at least. That's that's great. Uh, flume looks nice. I like the and the meandering feel of the flume. Definitely feels very arrow, uh, with the two lift hills and then the first lift having these sort of minor drops and then up into the the final big drop. And I like that that you kind of properly set that up. I feel like that tends to be a an issue at times with people's flumes where either it doesn't end with the big drop or it doesn't end with a big drop in a viewing area. Uh, or over water or anything like that you specifically set this up so that not only do you get the side view you get the front view get the diagonal view you get everything in there which is is nice um but it kind of sits in there pretty well yeah thank you all right so as we continue along let's see which way do we want to go let's uh let's go this way because i like this uh mine train coaster here um, so this one's pretty unique, I feel like, as far as just the overall design goes, and it's it probably comes across to me as the most unique ride in the park, this um, uh, Innovations Coaster. So where did this one come from? Um, Disney. Okay. So from the, what, Disney Americas? Yes. Uh, art that never happened, so it was um, some concept art that I feel like gets posted around pretty frequently. Um, but if I recall correctly, the concept of the ride would have been going through like different eras of American like industry. Mm -hmm. I mean like dark show ride. And then there'd be like outdoor launch track and stuff like that. I think it's cool here. And I know I screwed up the cars by resetting it, but um, the, the way that you've kind of created this plaza here. So you've got your, um, buildings that kind of create a semicircle around the thing and you gotta essentially go under the coaster for one to get into the space and then you have all this theming surrounded you and then also this coaster dropping out from the building giving you a nice little taste of kind of what's to come inside so it's done pretty well as far as that goes and then I like how there's there's this you know, realistic level of theming out here in the uh, wilderness that you're only going to see this from the train and uh, then you'll dive into this uh, little opening in the building, but you haven't really themed the rest of the building, which is you know pretty typical because most people aren't looking at that. They're going to be looking over here, and then by the time they notice this building, they're already inside. And so you've done a nice cutaway here as well uh, for the whole thing. So definitely you know, kind of tell you're working through the different scenic elements and different pieces actually works really well with all the mine and western scenery kind of combined together here little mine cars and everything is this more or less a standalone um attraction it seems yeah. like it doesn't necessarily have an area tied to it yeah it's just that yeah which that makes sense. Um, you know, it's such a, it's a pretty substantially sized ride. When did in the park kind of history did you see this ride happening? Is this something that's earlier on? Probably more recent type of ride. Um, I yeah, I'd, I'd say it's probably before Endorphin the the Orange Coaster was built mm -hmm. in terms of timeline. But it it's probably be a pretty high budget addition to a park like this. Yeah, for sure. And you've got some back of house stuff here as we spin around. Uh, this is our secondary entrance back here. Um, and you've got all the, the cabins and everything set back here, which I really like. Uh, just all the things and then having all the uh, handyman and everything walking around the space. Um, cute little play area. Love the, um, yeah, the entry buildings here for the cabins. Um, definitely has that Cedar Point vibe, I think, but... Uh, we'll look at some of the outskirts here once we finish up the the rest. So uh, another good games area here. So we got the uh, guess your weight guy. Um, is that just the inverted swing ship sunk now? Yeah, <laughs> that's clever. Only I've seen that. 
Um, so sort of Art Deco type uh, stuff going on here. Uh, pretty nice building on the side. This is the uh, one of the buildings in our, our uh, cable car finally lands here. It's a pretty long cable car. It does its job, I guess, taking you to the back. And then uh, our arrow coaster here, so Screaming Eagle from 1990. So this is one of the earlier coasters. A pretty decent sized one, and just kind of based on the, the history of everything, certainly seems like this one fits from a timeline of big arrow coasters, because this has got the, what do we have, six inversions on this one. Interesting on your uh, second corkscrew here, um, or the first corkscrew here, what made you go for the single versus the double? Uh, the path layout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's simply because of the, the space. Um, this was actually probably one of the last rides I added to the park. So I, I was working with a, a cramped space, and it, it honestly was more of just like a spur of the moment kind of not thought not thought out plan addition so it fits pretty well <laughs> in there yeah now were you working with the um the orange coaster being there first and then you had to sort of retcon this blue one in or how did that go yeah so i had the orange one i'm like you know it'd be kind of cool to add one more big coaster uh to kind of fill the skyline of the park so to speak and uh I figured like an older dated ride where it, it's like kind of had to then retcon in the, the orange coaster somehow mm -hmm. through like a tangle of a park. But um, it would seem like the, the blue one came first, orange came second, but I, I built them in, in reverse. Well, and that, you know, it's that's the goal of the park making, I guess, is to really make it seem like it happened in the order that you wanted to. And I can see that here for sure. It doesn't feel like the... Um... Uh, Screaming Eagle is forced in any kind of way to work around the other one because that's really what you want to avoid. But that uh, seems like you've done that pretty well. Um, if we go on to the back side of this, then we'll get to the other um, area that I think is is maybe one of my favorite areas, just with how kind of rich the the overall scenic is. So this is um, Boulder Dash, which I love the name reuse there, um, and uh, Gravity Group uh, Shuttle Coaster like. Um, Switch back down at ZDTs in Texas. Um, what uh, what made you want to go for one of these coasters? Uh, which uh, forget which um, was it was it Hex uh, who did this for Micro Madness a couple years ago? Uh, oh, I think so. Somebody did, and I always thought it was one of the coolest things at the time. Um, so I thought you know that'd be kind of a, a unusual addition to the park. So I asked. Um, if if Zara would be able to help me with this, um, and it it came together pretty well, I, yeah. I was always was fascinated by that uh, micro madness park. Yeah, it's kind of cool to see how this one sits in here. Uh, for one, I love that you've got the the double tunnel there underneath the entrance. I like that it's essentially an out and back coaster, but um, you know becomes a double out and back with the the backward section. So you got the, the lift and drop, and then also the spike kind of all sharing that same support structure. So it doesn't really seem as um, overbearing, I guess, on space than, um, than you might otherwise have it. Yeah, the one part I, I, I like is kind of like the, the, the trench is probably the fastest part of the ride, not the first drop. Yeah, it's got that. That would be a really kind of neat sensation ride-wise, I would think, because you hit this great speed here, and then you get almost essentially another kick here with a nice boost underneath the 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 trench space there. Um, exactly. But really love how this area is set up. So first of all, just that it's all kind of contained across the bridge here, and then you've got these couple little buildings. You've got the um, the flat ride here, which I think is is gorgeous. This uh, uh, dynamite dance twister here using the Enterprise. And just the way that it, the way that it works with the theming, and you got the backdrop here, you got the dynamite on the side, just everything sits around it really nicely from a theme standpoint. So it definitely feels like this is one of the newer areas of the park because it's got that kind of heavy, um, heavy theming to the overall space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was too, that was a fun area. Oh, go ahead. Oh, it was just a fun area to make. That I like the 
just kind of being creative with very simple stock uh, objects. Well, right, and it's very readable. I mean, these pipes don't really mean anything until you put it next to a rag called dynamite, and then there you go, all of a sudden it reads that way. So exactly. it's, uh, it's pretty cool in that sense. And two, that you were able to kind of bound the uh, rapids ride here. So an area over here that's completely separated here from the entrance has the little water jets and things like that uh, to kind of do some, some fun stuff with it. <clears throat> and then across the way, too, having the uh, um, topspin with the kind of nice water feature here in the in the front. Uh, I always feel like the, the in-game topspin is just so small, but um, with this kind of extra beaming in the front, you kind of give it some presence there, which is nice. So then kind of saving the uh, big coaster for last here. So this is Endorphin, which is your, uh, your new one here. So this is... Um, Intamin, so I'm guessing based on that you were going for something like uh, uh, the big one at Energylandia, or what was your what was your thoughts on this one? Kinda, yeah. Um, I don't know why I ended up with Intamin to be honest with you. Um, I think it the the support structure Alex helped me with that uh, for the lift hill, and I think we we're discussing uh, what manufacturer would do a lift hill like that. But honestly, I'm I that was I'm foggy on on the memory of that. Oh, that's fair. I, I think it it could read as either one if you wanted it to, which I think is kind of rare to be able to say that. But um, you know, I can definitely see this as sort of a newer gen uh, Intamin hypercoaster. But it could also very easily read as a B and M if you wanted it to. It kind of has that um, new B and M Giga vibe to it. Yeah, this was one of those. Things where I should just made an in-house ride. <laughs> it, just, it was fun to make, and it looks fun to me. That's and that's well, and that's the thing is I I fear people get too caught up in manufacturer names and things like that. I mean, I, I like that kind of stuff just because it's interesting to me. But um, the layout here is is really cool. I love the way that you've got the double hill, airtime hill here, and then this kind of snaking bend that goes under, over, under. And then you're off over here to do this turnaround. It's really smooth uh, through this whole thing, and I, I really like that that overall design. Yeah, I tried to um, layout wise. I tried to kind of do the same sort of vibe as uh, Millennium Force, but if there was like a little bit more something at the end of it than just like that weird turn over the queue. Yeah, you definitely have that sort of T-shaped feel to it. So it's got that that overall kind of shape to the whole thing, and and it does its thing sort of out towards the back side of the island there with a little bit of that kind of push inwards. Um, but, you know, outside of the park then, we looked at, at the park itself. We've got some of the things that we already had kind of poked around with here, which, you know, we have our service road and everything, all the nice back of house areas. Um, I like the way that all this is sort of set up here. We've got the, uh, the cabins at the old mill. Um, Beautiful mill, really love that uh, with the uh, moving, uh, moving wheel, and then just all the little cabins here throughout. I, I think you did a nice job at scattering a bunch of cabins in here without them feeling like there's just repetitive. Um, offsetting like one or two here, and you know having some of them that that are in line, so it does feel like they should be in a group, but not totally uh, full of repetition, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I tried to. I mean, I, they are all you know, copy pasted, you know, uniform, but they all have different landscaping, different door colors for, you know, I guess guests actually going, you know, which house you're in or which cabin you're in. Yeah, the door color certainly helps. I think that really helps it look look nice. Um and then to just, character. Yeah. And then just coming around to we have the, the marina over here with um the boat slip and then uh this kind of really nice uh entrance building here uh for the the marina itself and a couple little boats um i do like the way that you built this marina here with the protected um the protected waters here you've got your lights and everything else um and this uh kind of nice little breakwater um out from the river inside so that's it's very nicely put together as far as landscape goes so when you look back at this park kind of what is what ends up being your favorite bits Good question. Um, honestly, I, I like making the flume. That was that was fun. Just little things, just like the 
adding the the toadstools and little colorful flower bits and stuff just made it kind of cool at least fun to build from a viewer perspective it's you know that's up to you or whoever's looking at it um but really just getting a, a the park done it was rewarding um, yeah i'm sure it, it seemed when did you start on this it seemed like it popped up pretty quickly still i think um last november october november i um went uh, i stayed overnight um did a little quick vacation up there to Marblehead um, last last fall, last winter, and um, came home and started working on this. So it was just yeah. kind of going up there, but I couldn't go to the park because it was closed, so I tried making the park. <laughs> yeah. Well, it turned out very nicely, and I think it, it's um, it's definitely worked out well. Uh, any plans for future stuff on the horizon, or are you still kind of figuring out what your next one's going to be? Um, going a um, little different. I want to I haven't shared it with really anybody yet, um, but I I was bummed. I mean, not you know say anything bad with with head to head. I wish I was on the Pirates Park. So I'm th- I'm doing something in that uh, genre. All so, right, that's a good tease. Yeah. I'll look I look forward do, to seeing that. Yeah, every park on our team, so I I could be on Pirates. So well, there we go. We'll look forward to uh, seeing that here, and uh, maybe we'll do a review of that once you're uh, done there. Cool. Yeah, we'll see you in two years. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's better than my ten. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that's that's it for for the park. Anything uh, you want to say in closing? No, uh, I just want to say thanks to anybody who looks at it. Anybody who leaves comments, greatly appreciated. Um, really enjoy making parks for the community. Yeah, absolutely. And you can download this park in uh, the description here in the video. Uh, So just scroll on down and you can find a link to the download and also to the forum topic. So once you download it and view it, you can leave a comment and uh, let us know what you think. So um, thanks uh, very much for uh, coming on to the channel and talking about your park. It was good to good to chat. Yeah, same. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. And it's been a pleasure. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for everyone watching. So uh, until next time, uh, we will catch you later. Bye now.